Good day, Code fans. This is Bill Stannard from Yes Online Learning at the St. Louis Science Center with another of our online learning sessions. This one titled Pocket Code Lesson Number One, Falling Penguins. And this is Part C, in which we're going to explore how to score points every time we catch a penguin in the basket. So let's get going. You can see we have the background and the penguin and the basket, and we'll go ahead and play it for a moment just to see how far we've gotten. And there are our penguin being caught by a basket, but nothing happens with the score, no matter how many penguins we catch, so we need to add some code. So I'm going to hit back twice, and the place where we're going to add the code is with the penguin. So I'm going to go into the penguin's code by clicking on the penguin and into scripts. And right now we have setting its side size to 30%. And then inside the forever loop, we have the penguins falling from the sky. Now, inside of that forever loop, we need to find out if that penguin is getting caught in the basket. And to do that, if the penguin is caught in the basket, we use the word if. So let's look for an if piece of code and see if we can't test to see if the penguin is touching the basket. So I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to go into control and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to see if one is smaller than two is true, then I'm not going to pick the one with the else. I'm just going to pick the one with the then. There it is. And I'm going to put that inside of the forever loop. Okay, and it's there now, right? Okay, so I'm going to click on that, meaning it's okay. It's in the right spot. And you notice as soon as I click on it, it adds another block called end if. Okay, so we need to put something inside in between the if one is less than two is true then and the end if block. So what we're going to test for is not if the number one is less than two, which it certainly is. We want to see if the penguin is touching the basket. So I'm going to click on that one less than two and I need to look and see how am I going to find out whether it's actually touching that object. Okay? I can look in a couple of places, but the first place I'm going to look is in sensors. So I'm going to click on sensors and go down. And so far I see all sorts of interesting stuff, but I don't see it having anything to do with touching. So I'm going to go back from sensors and I'm going to look in properties. And in properties, aha, there I see it. Down under motion properties, it says touches, actor, or object. So I'm going to click on that. And the object that I'm wondering if the penguin is touching is the basket. So I'm going to click on that and there it is. So it now says if touches the actor or object basket is true, then something should happen. So I'm going to click OK and you can see it now reads that. If touches actor or object basket is true, then what do we want to have happen? Well, we want to add one to the score. So let's find that. I'm going to hit plus, and we remember that the variables live in the data drawer. So I'm going to click on the data drawer and open it. And I'm going to do the second one down, which is change the variable score by one. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to leave it just the way it is. So I'm now going to touch it, which will set it in place. And that looks about right. So I'm going to click go. And now, whoa, I caught a penguin. Whoa, I caught another one. 
And look at my score. My score is going up. I'm now up to four, and I think that's kind of what I want. So I'm now going to go back and go back again from Penguin, and I'm now looking at my BS underscore Falling Penguins game. I have a background. I have a penguin. I have a basket, and my game seems to work. Well, that's it, Code fans. This is Bill Stannard from Yes Online Learning at the St. Louis Science Center with another of our online learning sessions titled Pocket Code Lesson Number One, Falling Penguins, and this has been Part C. Before I say goodbye, though, don't forget to save your project with your initials followed by the project name, because when you post this to the cloud and the instructions in this lesson tell you how to do that, you want to make sure that your initials are part of the name. Bye for now, and I'll see you in our next lesson. Thanks for watching.